Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In the last episode of Blazor Train, I showed you how to do basic authentication and authorization in a Blazor server application. In this episode, I'll show you how to do it in a Blazor WebAssembly application. There's a little bit of plumbing, but the component markup and code is exactly the same. And guess what? That's all coming up right now, right here on Blazor Train. Okay, so I've created an application here in Visual Studio .NET 5 application called Basic Auth Wasm. So just like last episode, uh, we're going to change the authentication to individual user accounts. I'm also going to make this an ASP.NET Core hosted application and uh, it should be pretty obvious as to why. All right, so before we do anything else, I'm going to go into App Settings JSON, and just like we did before, we're going to change this database name just to Basic Auth Wasm. All right, now just as we did before, we're going to create that auth database, and I'm going to be in uh, the, the default project. It's going to be Basic Auth Wasm Server. This is the Package Manager console, and we're going to simply type update dash database. Now, if we expand in the SQL Server Object Explorer, our databases, you can see we've now got another database here called Basic AuthWasm. So this is the one we're going to use. Now, right out of the box, I get authentication, but I don't get authorization. Well, I don't get role-based authorization. I get authorization as to whether I'm logged in or not, but not role-based, and that's what we really want here. So let's run this and see what happens. Now here's a caveat. If you do not update the database first with a basic migration, and you just run it and you go register, you're going to get a message that says you need to apply these migrations. And you can just click that and refresh, and the database will be created for you. But I want to be explicit in terms of showing you how to uh, apply that migration and update a database. All right, so let's register. Just like before, carl at franklins.net. My password is P, capital P, at S-S-W-O-R-D-1. Don't do this at home. Now you gotta click to confirm your account. Uh, if there was another step, like two-factor authentication or confirm by email, this is where that would happen. But we don't have that, so we're just going to log in. Now, the only thing that you see here, there's, everything is the same. We haven't limited what we can do uh, with authorization, but we do have this identity here. Hello, carlfranklins.net. So I have been authenticated, and authentication means who are you? Prove it. Now that I've proved who I am, let's talk about authorization. What are you able to do? All right, so... In episode 26, I showed you how to do basic auth in a Blazor server application, and that was relatively easy. This is a little bit tricky because we have a client that needs to know what it can do, and then we have the server, which is actually handling all the permissions and things, and so now we have API access between those two things. Also, the server project in a WASM uh, application is using identity server which is sort of hidden away from you so there's just a few things that we need to do differently that's what I'm getting at and the first thing is we're going to add to the client a new class and we're gonna call it custom user factory now the reason that we need this is because identity server gives us our claims as a jot token and it's all just in one big string so what this does is it returns uh, a claim principle from that that has in it all the claims sort of broken out into uh, the roles element, all right? So suffice it to say, we need this little bit of plumbing in order to do role-based authorization in a Blazor WebAssembly application. So this is our custom user factory. We're going to add that now to program as a service. 
replacing the add API authorization line with add account claims principal factory, and that's our custom user factory. Now, in the startup for server, we have to do what we did before, which is add identity here, but also this identity server has to be configured for roles. So I'm just gonna delete this whole thing here and replace it, and I'll show you what's different. First of all, add default identity, we added this add roles, just like we did in episode 26. But now add identity server says that we're going to use these claims, name and role. Name is the email address, role is a role that we're going to define in the, uh, as an identity role. So you need this little bit of plumbing as well. Now before we can start, we're gonna go over to imports razor and we're gonna add a couple of things here. And other than that, everything is exactly the same in the component model as it was in episode 26. So let's look and see what we can do now. Um, just like before, I'm gonna add a notes file here. Okay, so in this readme.txt in my application, I link to the documentation on ASP.NET Core Blazor authentication and authorization. Very good. And I'm also going to link to this identity manager GitHub repo. And this is, as I said in, the, in episode 26, uh, it's a, a, an open source manager for managing users and roles. And it has been deprecated and there's new stuff, but it still works with uh, ASP.NET Core identity. And uh, that's what I'm using. So I've got my identity manager project right here. Uh, I'm going to change the database to basic auth wasm as I did before. And in the startup, I'm also going to change this from use SQL light to use SQL server. Okay. So now I should be able to run this and because we're hitting the same auth database, uh, as my application is, you'll see, here's me, carl at franklins.net. And we can also assign roles here. Now there are no roles because we haven't added them yet. I just wanted to show you that Identity Manager has picked up that there is one user, carl at franklins.net. So let's start with the nav menu, just like we did before. Now I've added this authorized view surrounding these two links. The one to the counter page requires can view counter page as a role. And in order to show the fetch data link, we need to be in the role can view weather data. Now, just by doing that, I should not see these two links, whether I'm logged in or not. Okay, I'm not logged in, I don't see them. So the authorized view is doing what it should there. Now I'll log in and it's still doing its job. It's not showing them to me because I'm not in those roles. I don't, I don't have those roles assigned to me as a user. Now check this out. If I go to counter, you'll see that comes up no problem because this page doesn't have an authorization rule on it. It's only those links so far. All right, so if you remember from episode 26, what we did on the counter page, is add an attribute. And this is how you specify the authorized attribute on a page. And now we're saying that can view counter page, uh, the user has to be in that role in order to see this page at all. So now let's see what happens. Okay, we'll log in. Now we'll try to go directly to that counter page. Mwah, mwah, mwah. You are not authorized to access this resource. All right, so it's doing its job. Now let's add these roles, can view counter page and can view weather data and give my user access to them. Can view counter page, can view weather data. I'll run my app again. Log in. And guess why this isn't working yet? This is why. Just because we added the roles doesn't mean that we gave Carl Franklin's net permission. So we're gonna edit this user, go to roles, 
check off both of these guys and now I have these permissions. I will log out and log back in. Now we're cooking with gas. Now I can access the counter from here and from here and all is happy. The next thing that we did was we showed how we can use the authorized view inside any page. So I'm going to replace this entire button in the counter page with this. So here we have an authorized view and where we've got the role can click counter button. And if we're authorized, we see the button. If we're not authorized, we do not have permission. This is a different role, can click counter button, than what we specified in the nav menu, which is can view counter page. So if we run this right now, we should be able to go to the counter page, but we will not be authorized, and therefore we will see you do not have permission to click the counter button. There we go. Now when we go to the counter page, wah, 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 I do not have permission to click the counter button. Please ask for permission. All right, so let's get permission. First, we need to add that role. Then we need to authorize our user. All right. Now let's log out, log back in. The reason we have to do that is because we have to get those claims. Those claims just don't automatically update. We have to get them every time we log in. All right, now we can click the button. We can see the button, we can click the button. Now here's where we differ from last week's show, episode 26. I said that you couldn't actually do code-based authentication with roles in a Blazor WebAssembly application. You actually can. It just requires that extra step that I showed you. So out of the box you can't, but because we have added that custom user factory and we've added uh, on the server side the ability to handle roles within Identity Server, we can do it now. So what I showed you before, I'll show you again. What if we want to test whether the user has permission based on roles when we click? That's what we're gonna do next. And here it is. So we still keep our attribute, authorized roles can view counter page, right? We have to have that role just to be able to see this page. And now we're injecting an authentication state provider into the page. We still have our authorized view, everything's good. And because we have this permission and we have this permission, we're gonna to get to this point. Now, when we increment count, we can check this claims principal user which we pull out on initialized uh, async from the auth state, the authentication state provider. And that, that's our claims principal user. And now we check to see if we're authenticated and we're in role can increment counter. And if we pass that test, now we can increment the count. Otherwise, we're setting a message to you do not have permission to increment the counter message we're showing right there. All right, so let's just run it and to show that we are not in this role, can increment counter. It should fail when I go to click the counter button. All right, we got this far. Now watch this. Boom, wah, wah, wah. you don't have permission to increment the counter. So we can use code to test the roles in a Blazor WebAssembly application if we do those two little bits of plumbing that I showed you in the beginning. Now, of course, we're gonna add the role. Can increment counter. And we'll add my user to that role. Or add that role to my user. However way you slice it, it comes up peanuts. We'll log out, log back in. Now we're back in business. All right, so there you have it authentication and role-based authorization in Blazor WebAssembly. Now back to you in the studio, Carl.
So in the last two episodes, we've learned how to use ASP.NET Core Identity with a SQL database to do authorization and role-based authentication in both a Blazor server application and a Blazor WebAssembly application. You know, ASP.NET Core Identity is adequate for many scenarios, but we haven't addressed social media login or multi-tenancy. We'll get there. We will. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blaze a trail.